pressure, temperature, compressibility, molecular weight, and specific heat ratio of the gas at the compressor inlet and the machine's rotational speed affect the operating performance of centrifugal compressors. For example, a compressor receiving inlet air at atmospheric conditions will develop higher discharge pressure on cold days than on hot days at a given rotational speed and inlet volume flow. The power requirement also will be higher. Changes in atmospheric conditions such as relative humidity and barometric pressure will affect performance, although these factors are usually less significant than inlet temperature. We can account for these changes and others encountered during operation by modifying the performance curve of the compressor. Manufacturers of centrifugal compressors often supply curves that define the machine's aerodynamic performance. These curves take many forms, some of which are polytropic or adiabatic head versus inlet volume flow, as seen here, or discharge pressure versus inlet volume flow. The data for the performance curve are the nameplate rating conditions, so inlet pressure, inlet temperature, molecular weight, ratio of specific heats, and inlet compressibility. The manufacturer will not normally supply performance curves for other than rated inlet conditions unless specifically requested. In this section, we will develop application procedures for modifications to the performance curve for a single-stage centrifugal air compressor. Of course, these procedures are valid for any gases and for multi-stage centrifugal compressors with somewhat reduced accuracy as the number of stages increases. To begin our journey, let's first consider the following equations to illustrate the procedure accounting for variations in inlet conditions. The first equation that you can see here shows that the head produced by a centrifugal compressor is a function only of its mechanical tip speed and head coefficient that, in turn, is a function of the inlet volume flow. Therefore, the head produced by a centrifugal compressor at a fixed speed and inlet volume is a constant. This statement forms the basis upon which we can derive the procedures accounting for change in inlet conditions. Now, if we compare the next two equations at a fixed inlet volume flow, we find that variations in inlet conditions will affect the power requirements. Here, for example, an increase in inlet temperature will result in a decrease in inlet weight flow in order to keep the inlet volume flow constant. And a decrease in the inlet weight flow will result in a decrease in the power requirements. And an increase in inlet pressure will result in an increase in the inlet weight flow to keep the inlet volume flow constant. And an increase in the inlet weight flow will result in an increase in the power requirements. Here, of course, these power effects arise from changes in the inlet density and therefore in the weight flow. We will see this in detail further ahead. The following figure is a typical performance curve for a single-stage centrifugal compressor at rated inlet conditions and discharge expressed as head. Here, the blue curve is the head capacity curve. The main characteristic of this curve is decreasing head with increasing flow. The red curve that you can see here represents the limit of the dynamic head curve. This limit is referred to as surge. 
surge is a system phenomena resulting from the unability of the centrifugal compressor to produce the amount of head that the process system needs. Surge can be a very dangerous phenomena if allowed to continue. Damage caused by surge in any type of centrifugal compressor can render that compressor inoperable, and this for periods of times in excess of two months. These concepts are explained in exquisite detail in our bestseller course, Centrifugal Compressors, Principles, Operation and Design. So, if you feel like you want to know more about this topic, then please check out this high-quality technical course on compressors. And don't forget to ask us for a coupon code to enroll in with a discount. Finally, the black curve that you can see here represents the shaft horsepower as a function of the volume flow. The next figure that you can see here is a similar curve with the discharge of the compressor expressed as pressure. Keep in mind that in the industry, head versus flow is always preferred because the head produced by a centrifugal compressor is not affected by gas density. However, discharge pressure is. In other words, the discharge pressure curve becomes invalid if the inlet gas temperature, inlet pressure or molecular weight changes. But even in these conditions, we do have a way to account for these changes and adjust the discharge pressure curve to the actual inlet conditions. The corresponding methodology will be explained in details in a later video. For now, we will focus our attention on head versus volume flow type of performance curve, as the head produced by an impeller at a fixed speed and inlet volume is a constant. Now, compressor manufacturers provide such curves, so head versus volume flow or discharge pressure versus volume flow to define the flange to flange performance of their machines. External equipment such as inlet and discharge piping, inlet filters and inlet and discharge valves are not normally considered in establishing the performance curve. Therefore, we must account for pressure drop due to the external equipment when using the performance curve. The term inlet volume flow will be used extensively in the developments that follow. Inlet volume flow is the volume flow that exists at the compressor's inlet flange. In this course, we will develop our techniques by using the adiabatic head curve, because adiabatic head lends itself more readily to our developments. The final equations, however, are applicable to the performance curves expressed as adiabatic head or discharge pressure. In the next video, we will see the effect of a change in the inlet pressure on the compressor performance.